I run an organization called Sunflower Trust. Sunflower Trust is a literacy and leadership program in Kibera slums and what we do is that uh, we empower girls through literacy in different areas for them to be leaders in their own species. So currently we target girls between uh, from class 5 and we work with them through to class 8 and the activities that we take them through are one liter literacy which includes you know basic Read, read aloud sessions, drop everything and read, just to improve their literacy levels in school. Then we also have uh, life skills programs where we take them through a 24-week pro program on gender equity, where they get to learn about uh, what challenges other girls face through around the world. And then we also take them through technology, and we also do uh, life skills through dance and also sports. I was brought up. Brought up in a, from a very challenging background so and I was working in a youth for employment organization and one of the ch main challenge was uh, girls who are very vulnerable in t when it came to linking them to job opportunities so they had a lot of you know a lot of excuses or reasons or, re or even they could not express themselves so I thought like it's now time just to go a step back and uh, target the younger ones and that's how uh, we actually planted the seeds of sunflower, went back to the slums, target the most vulnerable and the girls who, who, are, who are at risk actually to drop out of school. And those are now the girls in grade five who are low performing. The beneficiaries of my work are uh, specifically the direct beneficiaries are girls between the ages of 10 to 15 years who are in primary school and who are low performing. And these are girls who are also coming from a uh, under privileged backgrounds and in the formal settlements of Nairobi. Then I have another group which are now uh, also direct beneficiaries that we work with to specifically target them on life skills program and that those are boys and girls in grade six of different schools who are also at risk and also but they also need to adapt on how to work with the girls that we are empowering. Currently for the uh, after school program, uh, we have uh, part, we have actually targeted or trained more than 150 girls in the literacy program and the, on the life skills program with the schools, we have worked with more than 300 boys and girls. When it comes to success stories, I think I have a whole to share, but um, just seeing that change within the, you know, the beneficiaries, someone comes, they cannot read or they are functional illiterates, someone in grade five, they write words but you cannot really read and then suddenly they can read and write, you know, to their grade level. For me that is what we call success and that is what we want to see. Starting a startup is not very easy as uh, working in an existing organization. So, you know, the issue of bringing in systems together, structures, you have people or staff that are looking up to you, so you also need to look for their salaries. That means that you need more funding. There's a demand out there. Schools want you to actually implement this program in their schools, so you need more funds to, to do that and partnership. So that it has been a learning experience and uh, I actually went ahead and transformed the challenges to opportunities. So whatever challenge that come my way, we look at it as opportunities, looking at how best we can actually empower this young girl not to go back to the life that they were in yesterday. Well, as an organization, we are looking at growth in the near future. We are looking at um, impacting more lives within the different informal settlements of uh, Nairobi and also extend it out of the Nairobi County. We, we are looking at working with more schools because for us an impact can only be realized in a specific uh, area which we call schools. So we are looking at partnering with more schools within Nairobi and also out of Nairobi. So it means that we will expand and looking at uh, our staff capacity will have to also uh, grow. So for us, we're looking at a lot of growth in terms of just expanding the program to other areas. Why I deserve to be a Zuri alum alumni is uh, one is uh, just being in a network. 
being in a network makes you grow as a person and also as an, as an organization because here we are bringing different expertise on the table and are learning from the best practices from everyone. So that is why one main reason that I want to be part of the alumni. Another one is also where I'm coming from, I'm, I'm, I'm also coming with my own uh, learning experiences and best practices that I will want to share with other people who will want to adapt this kind of a model and of course bring in different models to make the Girl Empowerment Project better than it is right now. What we are doing as an organization to break the bias as uh, the International Women's Day theme of this year is uh, we're already working with boys, we are bringing on board boys into the program. As much as our main aim is to improve the literacy and uh, build leadership skills for the girls, but we are trying to empower girls who will work with boys later. So it's only, it only makes sense to bring the boys on board who also to need to be prepared for that. So right now we have a life skill program that we have uh, enrolled in five different schools that targets both boys and girls in different five schools that is within the informal self -means. So the boys basically go through the 24 week uh, life skill curriculum where they get to see how, what the challenges what challenges girls from seven different countries are facing in this world and they get to re relate to it in their own spaces.